Hello booktube. Well, it's Friday Reads, filmed on Sunday. A little late perhaps, but that's life. Anyway, let's get to the point of this video as it's already been quite the long week. So, if I had to sum up this week, I would say it sounds like a Bonnie Tyler song. Where have all the good books gone? Yeah, I was not very impressed. In fact, as you will see, it starts to look like I was channeling Sean the book maniac because I abandoned three books. But before I get to that, let me start off with the books that I'm still reading. So I'm reading The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell and absolutely loving this book. It is brilliant. I'm loving all the allusions to other um, works of literature, but more about this one next week when I finished it. Then for some light reading, and I mean very light because this is not something you're going to write home about. There is Saving Sophie by Sam Carrington, which is oops, um, a crime novel by the looks of it. It's, it starts off with um, the daughter being dropped off at home at 10 o'clock at night by the cops. And she is so drunk she does not know what she's done. Anyway, so those are the two that I'm still busy with. Then let's start on the DNF pile, the bail pile, the abandoned pile, whatever, whichever name you prefer. So the first one up is Because It Is My Blood by Gabrielle Seven. Now I bought this book because I read The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery and absolutely loved it. That book gave me a physical response to it. So um, I can't say I cried. I don't cry over books, but I had to swallow a lot and eventually succumb to blowing my nose. So I really responded quite a lot to AJ Fickery. And I saw this one, saw it was Gabriel Seven, picked it up and yeah, didn't read the back cover even because that would have been a big clue. Why a mm, not in the mood. And um, yeah, and then I saw Webka's, um, well, read Webka's review um, on it in, on Goodreads. Uh, her channel is One Book Run, One Review. Um, very interesting channel, that. And um, she had nothing nice to say about this. And although I'm only that far in, it made up my mind for me. I'm not doing this to myself. So goodbye. One more of that massive TBR pile. Then, and you'll notice the trend starting, um, I DNF the sealed letter by Emma Donoghue. And we're going to continue now that the camera is back up. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm in the right place or not. Anyway, so I was talking about the sealed room by Emma Donoghue, which I, uh, the sealed room, the sealed letter by Emma Donoghue, which I um, picked up because I loved room by her, especially the first half of room. So, I wanted to try something else that she had written and unfortunately I found this one horribly disappointing. So the main character's name in this unfortunately is Fido and she is a woman um, in the Victorian age but she's a woman with um, of a higher class and she is with the movement trying to get women to work or allowing women to work. She's running what it sounds like a newspaper and this means that she would be intelligent, right? But she did not come across as intelligent. In fact, she came across as rather gullible. Her friend, um, who she hadn't spoken to for about seven years, she was married to, or is married to, a man in the British Navy, and they'd been in India, I think it was. And anyway, she comes back, and it's slowly revealed that she's having an affair with a man, and her husband leaves her. Now, what I've just told you happens in that much of the book. There was just too much waffle. And for a woman who was so intelligent, I found her character exceptionally gullible. I couldn't buy that she was intelligent, so that also disappointed me. I must admit, though, that after deciding that it, I'm stopping, I, I paged through and I see that the rest of the book appears to be the court case for the divorce, which has actually got me a bit curious, but we'll see what happens. I don't see me picking this up, though, again. It, it was just too long-winded. The next one I bought because, as I said, you see the trend? I read 
the curious incident of the dog in the knife by Mark Haddon which I thought was a fantastic portrayal of autism and as you know I've been teaching kids with barriers to learning for the last seven and a half years and it gave me a lot of insight into the boys that I teach who've had autism or who have autism it's not like you ditch that habit um, so I thought I'd give this one a try mm. I just couldn't it's not my kind of book to start off with so the spot of bother very literally is a lesion that the man finds on his leg which he is convinced is cancerous but the other spots of bother are all a lot more figurative so um, he finds out that um, his daughter is marrying a man who he doesn't like um, then you find out that his son is gay and now the question is who is he going to be bringing to the wedding and I just don't have the energy for that kind of drama it doesn't interest me you know making mountains out of molehills and stuff like that I can understand the concern about the lesion on the leg but oh and his wife was having an affair it's like yeah great anyway so what did I read this week um, so finishing I read this okay I don't usually read, in fact this is the first Jonathan Kellerman book that I've read, but this just goes to prove that I'm a sucker when it comes to book sales, because this was five bucks. Divide five rand by 13 and you'll have what it is in dollars, and divide it by 20 and you'll have it basically in pounds. In other words, this book was basically free. And as soon as it's almost free books, I lose any form of self-control and I just buy it because it's a book. So I decided to read this thing. and. I must admit, it, it wasn't bad. It's it's your regular pop novel, crime fiction. In this case, the guy, what was his name? Alex Delaware. He is a psychologist who assists the police. And, I mean, I'm going to ignore the fact that ethical boundaries were violated in multiple ways and multiple times. But... Uh, you know, it, it wasn't a bad story. In fact, the premise behind it was interesting. A girl had was given jury, du jury duty and um, this, the trauma from the jury duty actually sparked a memory and she ended up having recurring nightmares, which um, obviously is what happened to over 20 years ago in the past. So that part was interesting. But it was also, it, it could have been a lot shorter than that. And I found the end so drawn out that it kind of killed it for me. But anyway, it's finished, it's done. I can now get flogged off and more space on the bookshelf for books that I want to read. The next one I read was 6-4 by Hideo Yokoyama. Now, this story is not a crime novel necessarily. There is an element of crime in it, but that is not what this is really about. This is actually more like an insight into the politics in police stations or let's say the police system because it's not just the police station it's the whole system with the, um, the, the drive to get promotion uh, etc. But what made this interesting was that this was set in Japan so the culture is very different to what we are used to. So that part was interesting. However, I can see why a lot of people um, abandoned this one early on because for one, it's massive and it, it doesn't really cover what one expects. The novel starts with the former detective, he, he is now dealing with media relations. He and his wife are going to go and look at the body of a, of a teenage girl because their daughter is missing and this um, body is a close match so they're going to see if it's her, her or not. So initially as a reader, you go, okay, so it's going to be one of those kind of book, um, books. You know, it's missing daughter, but they're going to find her. Mm, not. Then you find out that there was a cold case. 14 years ago, a girl was kidnapped, held up for ransom. Father paid the ransom, and then her body was found. And this happened 14 years ago. And so then you think, okay, well, this is now going to be a cold case um, murder story but it's not really that either that one does play an element in there but it's actually basically an insight into the politics in the police system which was really quite interesting I really got into this and although the, saying it sounds like a police drama 
um, or a political drama. Um, it sounds boring. It is not. It becomes quite the thriller because there is a whole lot of stuff going on and the whole idea of not dishonoring and, you know, you make one slight error. And I mean, they put this poor bloke in such an impossible situation. But it was it was an interesting read. I quite enjoyed it. So as you can see, I'm still keeping things pretty easy on the brain. Um, I haven't been delving into anything deep, but it's the end of the year and energy levels are low and, you know, wanting to start next year up and running. So I'm not going to kill myself right now with heavy books. But let's now talk about book purchases because, you know, I did mention this thing about no self-control and as you know, I'm working in a bookshop <laughs> at the moment. So, I bought The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I have already read this, but I didn't own a copy. Um, issue solved. I now have one, so I'm pretty stoked. Then, this one's an interesting purchase. Um, this is by Scott O'Dell, The Island of the Blue Dolphin. Now, I read this book when I was in Standard 4, which would now be considered Grade 6, which, if you're from a different country, would be something like your sixth year of school. And I remember loving this book. I do not remember what it was about, but for some reason, I don't know if it was running through list challenges on the internet, or if you ever want to slip into a black hole of time, go on there. You can tick off books for hours that you've read. Also gives you some ideas of other books that you could read. But anyway, I don't know if it was because I saw it there. But I've been thinking about this book on and off for at least about four or five months now. And then I found it on the discount pile. So it's now mine. I will reread it sometime. Next purchase, I hope is not a mistake if we consider my DNF reasons. You know, why I bought those books. <laughs> so I bought John Crow's Devil by Marlon James. Now, Marlon James, James wrote The Brief History of Seven Killings, which won the Man Booker, I think, 2015. I loved that book. I thought it was one of the best written books that I have read in such a long time. All the characters had such distinctive voices. It was fabulous. I loved the fact that when you had different characters narrating their chapter, they sounded sane and sensible. And when you saw them through somebody else's eyes, you realized they were bloody psychopaths and... I absolutely loved that book. So I found this one, so I thought I'd give it a try. I haven't read this back of it yet. I know I need to do something about that, but I, yeah, and it, at least it, it's not going to be huge. So looking forward to that one. The next one, Winter by Ali Smith. It's, I think, my second 2017 purchase in 2017. So I'm looking forward to this one once I've got around to reading Autumn next year. So I'll read the two together. So that would be pretty cool. And then the last book I got was A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levine. And um, Ira Levin, 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 I think. And um, I got this one because, hmm, how's this for an excuse, folks? So for one, I'd read Rosemary's Baby, and I really enjoyed that one. And this one's the matching book in my Rosemary's Babies read this one's like shocking pink but anyway they match so I'd been eyeing it on the bookshelves there for a while and by a while I'm meaning over a few months and then now what with it being the festive season and new stock coming in and we needing to put stock on the shelves I couldn't get the last bloody book on the shelf and I thought well bugger it I'm buying this one and then that, that one could fit there so that's the excuse I'm sticking to I bought this book so I could make space on the shelf <laughs> Although I must admit I've been tempted to buy a whole load of books for that reason. Because there's a limit as to what kind of magic I can do sometimes. But anyway, so that's that one. Um, and that's pretty much my weekend reads. Because I think it would be a bit of a disgrace to call this a Friday reads video. Apologies if the lighting is a bit odd. I'm trying to figure out how to use the phone better. Because I film at night because then the house is quiet. But the iPad was a lot more forgiving with light. So just bear with me while I'm trying to figure things out. It's also difficult because I'm using the back of the iPad, well, the iPhone. And it's kind of hard to figure out where I am in this whole picture too. I've got this tiny little mirror propped up behind. So I can 
maybe see if I'm in the frame or not. I'm not too sure if you're seeing the books or whether I'm holding them up too high. <laughs> but anyway, we'll figure this out. But I just want to get video, well, this video up and running because it's already two days late. I was also thinking, because tomorrow I'm off as well, that maybe I should do a bit of a bookshelf tour so that you can see the books that I've got because I have plans to get rid of quite a few. Um, I need to make space for books that I really want to read, get rid of those that I'm never going to read. I've already given some away actually. And um, yeah, so I thought maybe I should do something like that just so that I can see the difference in a couple of years or by next year um, as to what changes have been made. Anyway, that is me. I am going to go and edit that whole chaos thing in the middle and put this up online. Enjoy reading. Till next time. Bye.